Hi everyone, I'm Catherine from Tasty Thrifty Timely, and today we're taking a look inside our pantry with a bonus look at what we love to keep in our freezer. If you're new to cooking at home, this will hopefully be a helpful place to get some ideas for getting started. If you'll be cooking along with us, then you'll know what to expect because these are the ingredients we use in our everyday cooking. And if you've already been looking at our recipes and noticed some ingredients unfamiliar to you, this is where we'll give you some more info about those. Now, maybe you'll relate to this, but before Brian and I started to eat the way that we do now. We mostly cooked from home, but at least twice a week, we would step into our kitchen, open our pantry, our fridge, our freezer, and say, we don't have any food. And that's because we were mostly just shopping for the recipes we wanted to make that week or for those few days. With a few changes to what we have in our pantry, our fridge, our freezer, we can step into our kitchen and always make something really tasty to eat, often in less time than it would take for us to order food, and we can go two weeks without visiting a grocery store for fresh ingredients. So we're going to be talking about spices, nuts, seeds, and their butters, handy condiments to have in your fridge, our baking essentials, flours, and sweeteners, grains, noodles, legumes, and pulses and our oils and vinegars, canned, cartoned, and jarred pantry items, and then we will take a look inside our freezer. I had a spice rack when I first started cooking, but I mostly just used salt, pepper, garlic powder, basil, and oregano. And these are your great basic spices plus some Italian seasonings, but now we love to add some heat with our favorite smoked paprika, cayenne pepper, chili powder, and red chili flakes. And our Indian spices, we love curry powder, cumin, nutmeg, and turmeric, and our big flavor boosters, cinnamon and ginger. Now we do use more than these, but these are the spices that we go to most often. And for a full list of the spices that we use, click on the link below and head to our pantry tips on our website. And if you asked me what five I would choose from that group, it would be these. Salt, smoked paprika, turmeric, ginger, and cinnamon. And another big flavor booster is nutritional yeast. Now, if you've been looking at our recipes, this might be an ingredient that you're unfamiliar with. It's a flaked deactivated yeast. It tastes nutty and cheesy. It dissolves in whatever you're cooking and it gives your meal a big boost of savory flavor. This is one of the pricier seasonings that we have, but considering it replaces cheese for us, it does result in overall savings. And if you're looking for it at your local grocery store, you'll likely find it in the natural food section looking something like this. And at your bulk store, you'll be looking for these flakes of nutritional yeast. Oh, and some other big flavor boosters you might notice us using are seaweed. We tend to buy these snack sheets. They look like this. You can crumble them up and it gives your dish a nice oceany, fishy flavor. Sometimes mixes like Old Bay seasoning. And this one's just for fun. Kalanamak or black salt. It gives your dish an eggy, sulfur smell. And my family, oh gosh, my family is from the Portuguese island, São Miguel. And there is a village called the Furnas that's beautiful. It's full of natural hot springs and it reeks like sulfur. That's what this reminds me of. I never used to buy nuts and seeds. I did always have peanut butter though. Nuts are super versatile. They're full of flavor, texture, and you can soak them and blend them down into the tastiest sauces and spreads and dips. So the five that we always have on hand now are walnuts, cashews, almonds, pecans, and roasted peanuts. And sometimes we throw in hazelnuts, pistachios, or slivered almonds. Nuts are definitely probably the most expensive thing that we purchase. So if you have access to a wholesale store that will be your thriftiest option or look for sales at your bulk store. And seeds are just as versatile. We always have flax seed and chia seeds as egg replacers and they make great thickeners. This is whole flax seed and we grind it up when we need it ground. And we always have hemp seeds, sesame seeds, sunflower seeds, and pumpkin seeds as toppings. And now for their butters, natural peanut butter and tahini, which is a sesame paste we use for hummus and for flavoring other things. Those are are our go-tos. And because we have all this out, we're just gonna have a little snack. Uh, this is our favorite fastest snack in the world. Link to that below. A date, some peanut butter. Oh yeah. An almond and enjoy. We always had so many jars of random condiments in our fridge that we would buy for one recipe, never use again, and they would stay in the fridge 
for way too long. So now we only have what we use all the time. We have tamari, which is a gluten-free soy sauce. Regular soy sauce upset Brian's stomach for some reason, so we switched to tamari, and he's fine with it. And we love that it has less sodium and more of a savory flavor than regular soy sauce, but the two are interchangeable in our recipes. Chili garlic sauce, this is our go-to for adding heat. And liquid smoke, this one's just so much fun. It adds a huge boost of smoky flavor. It can be pricey online, but this bottle at our local grocery store cost us $2.79, so check there for the thriftiest option. Miso paste, this is a fermented soybean paste. It's salty, it's savory, it's great. To this section, we add our homemade pickled red onion and our homemade hummus for fun. Doesn't it always seem like you have baking supplies coming out of your eyeballs no matter what you try to do? So for our baking essentials, this is where we have our dairy-free butter, baking powder, baking soda, and unsweetened cocoa powder. And then we have our favorite toppings, coconut flakes, chocolate chips, and dried fruit. We have some cranberries, some raisins, oh, and some yeast for bread making. And some good to haves in this section, we like some homemade applesauce, things like vanilla extract, peppermint extract if you're like me and you love mint, and these rice puffs. They're fun to have too. And for flours and meals, our preferred flour is all-purpose whole wheat flour, but we usually always have white flour on hand as well. Almond flour is a great flour alternative. It is a little more expensive. If you have access to a wholesale store, then that'll likely be the best price or look for sales at your bulk store. Cornmeal, on the other hand, is a fantastic inexpensive meal to have. Chickpea flour or garbanzo flour, this is great for any recipe that would normally be made with eggs. So we make things like omelets, with this. And for our starches, we use arrowroot starch instead of cornstarch. Arrowroot starch is gluten-free, it doesn't have a taste, and it has no color, whereas cornstarch can sometimes leave a sauce looking a little cloudy. So the two are interchangeable, but we usually have arrowroot starch less often, but we do use tapioca starch. It's great for anything that you want a thick, chewy texture for. And sweeteners, we have cane sugar, sometimes we use coconut sugar, icing sugar, and then maple syrup and dates, both medjool dates and these lesser priced pitted deglet nora dates. We prefer cane sugar and coconut sugar to white sugar because they retain a little bit of nutritional value. If you're using coconut sugar though, know that it will darken your recipes and it is less sweet. So if you see a recipe for coconut sugar and you substitute cane sugar or white sugar, know that you can probably use a little bit less. Maple syrup and dates are fantastic ways to sweeten recipes without a refined sugar. Sugar. And now we have grains, noodles, legumes, and pulses. Oh my! My mother in law is a, a big Wizard of Oz fan, so she'll get that. For our grains, we have oats quinoa, brown rice, and we throw homemade breadcrumbs into here. For the oats, rolled oats, especially quick oats, are the most versatile, so if you're choosing one, I'd go with that one. Steel cut oats are a little higher in price, the nutritional difference is minimal, but they have a coarser texture and a nutty flavor, so they're nice to switch up your morning oats every once in a while. And our good to haves in this section are pearled barley, short grain rice for things like risotto, or back to my Portuguese heritage, a sweet rice, which I'm working on for you, and a white rice like basmati or jasmine. Now pastas, I always had on hand. I think I lived on pasta in my younger years. Pasta with bologna in it. Having something like spaghetti, macaroni, a penne noodle, you know those. Now we've added rice noodles, buckwheat soba noodles, and these sweet potato glass noodles. These are fantastic to have for Asian inspired dishes. You can make a quick 20 minute stir fry. So versatile, they're inexpensive, good for you, they're great. You can get them canned or dried. This is where we have lentils, green and red, chickpeas, Mm, what are these? Black beans, pinto beans, and kidney beans, white and red. And this is where we have tofu. Tofu is made of condensed soy milk. Soybean being a legume. Tofu is super duper bland on its own, but seasoned the right way, it's a fantastic inexpensive protein source. Our go-to is extra firm tofu, which has the least amount of water in it. And we go to it so often that we actually don't have any at the moment. So Brian's gonna cut to something so you can see it. This is probably 
the kind of tofu that you might be most familiar with in things like pad thai or Asian noodle and soup dishes. It's firm, it holds its shape, as opposed to this, which is soft or silken tofu. It has the most amount of water in it. It falls right apart and it's perfect for blending into creamy sauces and dips and spreads or making something like an egg-free quiche. We use olive oil and sesame oil, sometimes vegetable oil or coconut oil, lemon juice and lime juice for when you don't have lemons and limes. Our vinegars, we use apple cider vinegar, it's nice and sweet, rice vinegar for your Asian-inspired dishes, and then there's balsamic red and white wine vinegar, mostly for salad dressings, pickling, and adding a bit of sharpness to your dishes. So we have plant milk, which is fantastic because it's shelf stable. So it doesn't need to be refrigerated until you open it. And you can always have this in your pantry and you don't have to run out to the grocery store every few days or once a week for milk. Then veggie broth, ours is always homemade from the scraps of the vegetables that we use every day, coconut milk. And then we have pumpkin puree, because we like it, canned tomatoes, tomato sauce, canned beans, and some of our new favorites sun-dried tomatoes, chipotle peppers in adobo sauce for big, smoky, spicy flavor, hearts of palm, young green jackfruit, and bamboo shoots. Now, if you've already been looking at our recipes, these might be some of those ingredients that you're a little unfamiliar with. So hearts of palm is a vegetable that we use as a fish alternative. It's the inner core of certain palm tree varieties. It tastes kind of like an artichoke. You can slice it and it'll hold its shape, or you can flake it like you would with white fish to make something like a crab cake. Young green jackfruit. Jackfruit is a massive fruit that it's like a watermelon that grows on a tree. And you can buy it canned either ripe or this young green jackfruit. Ripe jackfruit's really sweet. It's nice and soft for smoothies. This kind, you can shred it and it has a pulled pork consistency and we use it as a meat alternative. And finally, bamboo shoots you might be a little more familiar with. These are great to throw into any of your Asian inspired dishes. Oh, and capers olives, those are good to have too. And now we have opened up our freezer and it is hot in here, so we have to move fast. Our freezer is super tiny and it's still so useful and this is where we have some carryover from the other sections. Something like tomato paste. I hated buying tomato paste. Even if I bought the tiniest can, the recipe would call for one tablespoon and then I would have leftovers and nothing to use them for. Well, now, I freeze it, pop it in a jar, Freeze it when you need it, scoop it out, pop this back in the freezer. Citrus zest. I never thought that you could freeze citrus zest, but whenever we have a lemon or a lime or an orange that we're just using the juice for, we zest it as well, put it in a little container, and then when you need a teaspoon of citrus zest, you have it. Some other game-changing things. Frozen garlic, sliced onion, and ginger. Our apartment gets super hot. Things like garlic and onion were going bad way sooner than they should, so we started putting it in the freezer. Turns out it's super handy. It makes your meals throughout the week so much quicker. It takes some time to peel them and slice them in a big batch at first, but it's worth it. And a handy tip for slicing anything and freezing it, things like veggies, fruit, beans, lay it on a single layer on a baking tray, pop that in your freezer. Once it's frozen, take it out, and then look at this. No clumping, easy scooping. Something like ginger freezes really well. It's easy to peel when it's frozen and slice when it's frozen, or just grate it into your dishes, peel and all. Other things that we always have are frozen veggies. Corn, peas, bell peppers, green beans, and all of our hot peppers are always frozen. We get them from my avu or my grandpa who grows them in his garden by the millions, he says. So we always have a big batch from him. Things like bell peppers are a little bit more expensive in terms of vegetables for us. So when we find them on sale, we just buy a bunch, slice them up, freeze them, and then we have them on hand. Edamame is fun to have for snacking. We usually have a sliced bread. And then we have things like frozen beans for easy meals, your wilted herbs. Once your spinach starts to wilt, pop it in the freezer, use it for smoothies, pestos, spreads and dips, frozen fruit, our frozen bananas. Once they get ripe, just tear them into chunks, put them in a bag, they're ready for your smoothies. Oh yeah vegetable scraps for our homemade broth. This has been a great new habit that we've gotten into. As we peel our vegetables throughout the week, we toss them in here and then we make some broth in just 30 minutes. Last but not least, an ice cube tray. I never even had an ice cube tray for the first few years that I 
had a freezer of my own. But now I do, and I use it mostly for freezing leftovers. So leftover coconut milk, we have some here. Toss it in an ice cube tray. Make yourself little coconut ice cubes, and that way you don't end up throwing out down the drain that little bit of coconut milk in the can. Our vegetable broth that we won't get to in time, we freeze it. Things like pumpkin puree, you can freeze in cubes. Who knew? And I think I have covered it all. We put everything back in our freezer, but if you're wondering about our freezer bags, our glass jars, we reuse what we have. It's really tempting to want to go out and buy all new pretty things, but our glass jars come mostly from things we've already bought, like tomato sauce or jarred olives, things like that. Our freezer bags, the plastic Ziploc bags, we've been reusing for about two and a half years. Shout out to Ziploc, they're very durable. We're not purchasing new product, but they're holding up really well. And as those wear out, we're slowly replacing them with some reusable silicone freezer bags. And we've come to the end. You've probably watched me grow frizzier and frizzier as this video has gone on. That might seem overwhelming, especially if you're just starting out cooking from home, but go slow. Build up your pantry with your favorite items. Look for sales. There's no need to do it all at once. Having our pantry like this is how Brian and I have built confidence cooking. Once you know what's in your kitchen, you know the flavors, the textures. If you're working from a recipe and you don't have one of the ingredients, you know what you do have that you can replace it with. Our pantry makes us feel like when we were kids on a special occasion, we got to go to an ice cream shop or a buffet and choose what we wanted to eat or choose the toppings to put on our food. That's what we do every day, every meal. We throw in some seeds, some nuts, some breadcrumbs, some pickled red onion, whatever we want, and it makes everything so much more fun and exciting and it feels like we're treating ourselves. And that's what we wanted to share with you. So we would love for you to subscribe and follow along with us and cook with us the tasty, thrifty, timely way. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, comment, and share. We'd love to hear from you. We'll see you for the next one.